Getting off Air Force One in a rainy South Africa, Barack Obama arrived with former President George W. Bush for Nelson Mandela's memorial service. Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter were also there, showing U.S. respect at the highest level across party lines. But it wasn't always like this. Throughout much of the 1980s, American policy was to engage with the apartheid regime which imprisoned Nelson Mandela. While this may seem shocking now, at the time even some major human rights groups had doubts over supporting him. Um, they felt that he had been involved in violent acts or he was involved in a violent wing of the ANC. They also were very concerned about um, the role that communism may be playing. Campaigning organization TransAfrica played a key part in changing U.S. perceptions. TransAfrica's founder, Randall Robinson, and so many others stood up against that U.S. policy. While we protested here at the South African Embassy, we worked tirelessly to make sure that legislation was put in place to sanction the apartheid regime. When Congress did pass such legislation in 1986, President Reagan vetoed it. But for the first and only time in the 20th century, the Senate gathered enough votes to overrule the president on a foreign policy issue, reinstating sanctions on the regime. Current Vice President Joe Biden was part of that fight. Visiting the South African Embassy to pay his respects, he said Mandela appreciated a trip Biden and other senators made in 1977 to visit South African anti-apartheid activists. And after he got elected president, he came by to see me because I was on a foreign relations and he thanked me, along with I assume everyone else that had gone on that trip, uh, for uh, supporting uh, sanctions against apartheid. When he was released from prison, one of Mandela's first overseas trips was to the United States, but it was years before he was fully accepted, and he was only officially taken off the terrorist watch list in 2008. Now there are few here who openly criticize Mandela, and the South African ambassador says there's no point accusing those who are slow to support him. This is not the time to look at someone who opposed Nelson Mandela then and say, why is he going to South Africa now? Why is he signing the condolence book now? I think it is in the spirit of Nelson Mandela that even in his death, he is able to make people change their perspectives. As the world marks Mandela's passing, perhaps it's that message of reconciliation that the man himself would have liked us to learn.